In this video, we're going to complete two examples where we're going to find the value of the unknown angles. You'll notice that both of them, we use the Greek letter theta to represent the unknown angle. Now, the steps involved are actually exactly the same as the steps we use when we find unknown sides. So this is not going to seem too foreign to those who've done the previous videos on this. The only thing that's really different is we don't do a slide, we don't do a switch, we do what's called an invert. And this is specifically used to calculate angles. Now I'd actually like to talk about what this word invert means. We sometimes say invert or inverse when we, we do this operation. But if you think of the number 4, and let's say I wanted to turn it into the number 20. There's actually a couple of different ways I can think of right now where you could turn it into 20. One way is you could multiply it by 5, and the other way you could add 16. Now, when we talk about inverse or invert, basically what we're saying is doing the reverse operation or doing the opposite operation. And what we mean is, what would I do if I wanted to go from the 20 back to the 4? How would I do that? Well, I could divide the 20 by 5. Or, in this case, I could subtract 16. And these are called inverses. The inverse of multiplying by 5 is divide by 5. The inverse of adding 16 is to subtract 16. So it's kind of like undoing something that you've done. Anyway, let's get into the example. So we're going to start off the same as when you find an unknown side. We're going to label the sides. Now, our hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. Opposite our written angle or given angle is 2.8. So this is our opposite and the 5.8 is adjacent to theta. Opposite our right angle is the 3, or the hypotenuse. Opposite our theta is our opposite side, and root 2 is adjacent to theta. Remembering that any side that has no numbers or letters, we cross off. So we're going to cross off the hypotenuse, there's no number there, and we're going to cross off the opposite, because there's no number there. All right. So that's step one. Now on to step two, which is Sokotoa. So when we look at um, question A, you'll notice we've got an O and an A, which is found at the end of Sokotoa, in the Toa section. So we're using T, then O, then A. T stands for tan. Next to tan, you write your angle, which in this case is theta. Equals, then the vinculum bar. When you look at the order of this, it says T, then O. So O is 2.8, goes at the top. A comes last, 5.8. So we've followed the first two steps. Now we've got to do what's called the inverse, or to invert what we have here. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring the tan to the other side. And we're going to put a little negative one there, and we're going to put our fraction in brackets. And this little negative 1 means that this is the inverse function of tan. Let's do the same on the one for the one on the right. We have an a and an h. We can see a and h in the middle. So we're going to use c for cos. Cos, then the angle theta, equals vinculum bar, a then h. So a is root 2, h is 3. And to find theta, we bring the cos to the other side with the little negative 1. So this is called inverse cos. And then we put our fraction in brackets. Now, it's not too hard to work this out, but some people find it tricky to find this tan with a negative 1, or this cos with a negative 1. So let's bring up the calculator. 
And of course, every calculator is different, but if you look at sine cos or tan, you can see the inverse above it. And on this calculator, it's in red. So you've got sine and then inverse sine, cos, inverse cos, and so on. So we just use the second function button. Second function tan gives you inverse tan. Let's uh, open some brackets. It is important to put brackets in. Some calculators do it for you. Otherwise, it can be quite easy to make a mistake. Now, I'm going to do 2.8 over 5.8, which you can also do just using divide. And close our brackets, equals, and we get 25.76 and so on degrees. Now, question A wants the answer to one decimal place. So we're going to go 25.8. We're going to round up. 25.8 degrees. All right, let's work out question B. We're going to clear it. All right, we have cos inverse or shift, or sorry, second function cos. Open our brackets, root 2, divide 3, close the brackets, equals. Now, this has given us a decimal. It wants us to give this solution correct to the nearest minute. So on my calculator, I'm going to go second function DMS which gives me 61 degrees, 52 minutes, and about 28 seconds. So I'm actually, just for now, I'll write this down um, in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So uh, 61 degrees, it's a bit annoying, the calculator disappears when I do this, 52 minutes, and I think it was 28.18 seconds. Yes. Now, it wants it correct to the nearest minute, which means we have to get rid of the seconds. And we're just going to have a quick look at the seconds and go, all right, 28.18 seconds. Have we reached the halfway point? And we haven't. We're close. If it was at 30, we would round up, but it's not. So we're just going to write our solution as 61 degrees, 52 minutes. We're going to round it down. And that concludes our video on example one.